In number two, we're told that we have a plane wave propagating in the minus z direction. So I'm going to say here is the minus z hat direction. Here is x hat and here is y hat. And we're told that it is right hand circularly polarized. So at z equals zero and time equals zero, we're told the way the electric field is pointing along the x-axis. And since it's right hand circularly polarized, it would have to then uh, travel around this direction as it's propagating, and it would trace out a circle since it's circularly polarized. The amplitude of this circle is square root of two volts per meter. From what we've drawn here, we know that the electric field as a function of z and t has both an x hat and a y hat component since it's going to be tracing out a circle in the x and y plane. So I'm going to put here x hat and we know the amplitude is square root of 2. Over here we'll have a y hat component with the same magnitude and we know these are going to be 90 degrees out of phase in order to trace out a circle. So here is cosine and in the argument, we would have omega t, same thing over here, omega t. And since it's propagating in the negative z direction, we're going to have plus kz plus kz. I used k here because it's propagating in free space. And then there could be some constant phase. And here's some constant phase. And then since they're 90 degrees out of phase, so I'm going to put pi over 2 plus or minus. We have to figure out which sign. And we were told that at z equals 0 and omega t equals 0, the E field points just along the x direction. So in that case, our x hat term has a cosine of 0 plus 0 plus phi naught. And for this to be a maximum, we might as well just set phi naught equal to zero. So we have cosine of zero, and we get our maximum amplitude, which is square root of two. So this over here is also going to be equal to zero, the phi naught. Then since it's right hand circularly polarized, we know that at z equals zero, and also omega t equals pi over two, it will the electric field will have rotated down to the minus y hat direction. So in that case, we want the y hat component of our expression for the electric field to be equal to minus square root of 2. So we have square root of 2. I'm just taking the y hat term from our electric field expression. So square root of 2 cosine and we want this to be equal to minus 1 so that we get a minus square root of 2 on the right side here. So this we would want to have equal to pi, the argument. So the, com the argument for the y component we had on the previous slide was omega t plus kz plus or minus pi over 2 since phi naught we found is 0. And so omega t is equal to pi over 2, kz is equal to 0. And then we have plus or minus pi over 2. And we want this to equal pi. So that means we need to use here plus pi over 2. Putting all this together, we get E, the function of z and t, is x hat square root of 2 cosine omega t plus kz plus y hat square root of 2 cosine omega t plus kz plus pi over 2, and that's volts per meter. Now for k, we can fill in a value for k for free space. We have 2 pi over lambda. Lambda was given, so we're going to get 104.72 radians per meter. And we also need omega, which is 
2 pi f, and since we're given lambda and we're in free space, we can get f from uh, c over lambda, since c over lambda, c is equal to lambda f. So we put all that together and we get pi times 10 to the 10th radians per second. So here are the coefficients that go into both of these cosine terms.